This is the air that I breathe. Air. Air is the medium we are working with in pneumatics. Hello and welcome to a new video about pneumatics. Huh? Air. Are we are also breathing air. And I'm pretty sure you know we only use part of the air, the oxygen part. This is essential for our body to survive. Huh? This is why we have to breathe. So air is a mixture of different gases. Okay. I'm also pretty sure you have learned somewhere that the standard, the nominal pressure on sea level is 1030 millibar. Okay. So if we have a look at the pressure, at the air pressure, here is zero bars. Yeah. And here's 1013 millibar. And since the gas mixture air is consisting of different type of gases, yeah, every gas has a certain partial pressure. Yeah? So there's the total pressure and also the parts have a partial pressure, Partialdruck in German. Yeah? So the biggest part is nitrogen. Yeah? It's around 80%, 78%. Yeah? So there is N2. Yeah? And the part which the partial pressure of N2 is around the 78% of the total pressure. Yeah? And this is, to be precise, 791. Yeah? millibar. Okay. Then there is a rather big chunk of oxygen. Yeah, oxygen around 21%. O2. Okay. Here the partial pressure of O2 is 212 millibars. Okay. And then there are different other things. There's, for instance, argon, there's carbon dioxide and so on, summing up to 100%. And I'm pretty sure you also have heard that there might be also a certain amount of, of water, steam, in the air. Yeah? So even below 100 degree we have a certain amount of steam, of water content. Yeah? Humidity we call it, air humidity, humidity. The thing is now that warm air can hold a lot of more steam, yeah? a lot of more water than cold air. So, for instance, at zero degree Celsius, at freezing point of water, 6.1 millibar of water, steam, might be inside this 1030 millibars. So, 6.1 millibar is the is the pressure, yeah, the partial pressure, where air can hold water. Yeah. If there is more water inside air, above 6.1 millibar, yeah, then this air is starting to condensate. There are little drops in the air then, nebula. Yeah. You can watch this pretty good if you have a cold beverage. Yeah. Then you put it on the table in summertime, then suddenly at the surface of your glass yeah, there are water drops appearing simply from out of nowhere it seems. Because the warm air has a lot of humidity, a lot of, of liquid, a lot of water content and when they are getting close to your beverage the air is getting cooler. The cooler the air is, yeah, the less water 
is allowed in the air and the rest of the water is then condensating and this is what you see at the surface of your glass. Yeah? So for instance at minus 10 degree yeah, we only have 2.8 millibar. At minus 20 degree, we have 1.3 millibar. And at minus 30 degree, we have 0 0.2 millibar. We have to be, we have very dry air. Cold air is very, very dry. Okay. And on the other hand, 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, we have allowed 23.3 millibar. And guess what? At 100 degrees Celsius, yeah, the boiling point of water, we are allowed 1030 millibar. Yeah. So all, all pressure might consist of, of steam. <laughs> yeah. This is why water starts to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. If the pressure is less, the air pressure is less than 1030 millibars, water starts to boil sooner. Yeah? Mount Everest, for instance. Yeah? Water will reach 70 degrees or something like this. Yeah? You cannot even cook your eggs. Okay, so why does it bother us? Huh? Why does it bother us? Then, okay, the water content, content huh. why do we care? Huh? One thing is for sure, we have to prevent uh, that uh, inside our, our pneumatic system there are somewhere, somewhere condensate. Huh? Condensate water is usually, you know, aggressive to iron, yeah? there will be rust. Yeah? And if you have a very strict hygiene, hygiene uh, content, yeah? for instance, pharma industry, yeah? then water might even be even destroy something yeah because it's simply not allowed it's it's waste there yeah? it is not clean yeah? it is simply not permittable so we have to prevent that in our pneumatic system we do have condensate problem yeah? so we need to use cold air and yeah but however, I mean, if we are sucking in air yeah, from the surroundings, it's not like we're sucking in nebula, nebula, right? It's we're sucking in air. And now we comes. Yeah. Imagine, imagine this is now the allowed part of water. Yeah. This is a loud part. Yeah? Now I'm sucking in this air and now I am compressing this air yeah? and I will double it simply. Yeah? I will compress it to around two bars. Yeah? What is happening to the partial pressures? The partial, partial pressures are increased exactly the same amount. Okay, Also doubled. Always doubled the partial pressures because the total pressure has doubled. Also, the partial pressures are doubled. Okay. Here's the rest. Huh? So you see now huh? the partial pressure has ri risen. It's raised, it's raised, it's higher. <laughs> the partial pressure is now higher. Steam partial pressure is now higher. Higher temperature did also change. However, if we then have it in the system, it will cool down. Okay. So here we have kind of O2. Here we have N2. Yeah, the partial pressures of all those parts has been increased. This is a little bit out of scale. This a this water. Yeah? However, it just sh should show you. Yeah? So it means after compressing the air, the air is hot, then it will cool down. Okay? So we say 
we have around the same amount of, of temperature after the compressing. However, we have higher pressure. Since we have higher pressure, we also have a higher partial pressure of water and this might lead to the fact that if I'm sucking in air with 20 degrees Celsius and let's say 20 millibars, there is no condensation at all. Yeah? And then I'm doubling it, so I have 40 millibars, yeah? partial pressures. So the difference between 23 and 40, the 70 millibars, they need to condensate somewhere. Yeah? This is why we usually have in pressure vessels somewhere a condensate trap. Uh, we need to relieve the condensate. And of course, if this is then going somewhere into the system, I might get a problem there. Because suddenly, air is in the system. Uh, this means I have to dry the air after compression. Uh, if there is a big, in standard compressors at home or something like this, you usually have this condensate trap, you open it, water is coming out, you close it, from time to time you open it, you are fine. However, if you have a bigger scale uh, system, you want to dry the air. And you see, it's simply necessary to dry it because of this behavior. The thing, yeah, where how much temperature we have, we can have uh, when water is starting to, to, to condensate. Uh, this, is, this is called Taupunkt in German. I'm not sure the English term now. Condensation point. Uh, the temperature where it is starting to condensate. You can say a temperature. You have a certain pressure in your system, let's say 10 bars. Yeah? Pressure condensation temperature is minus 20 degree. If the air is getting below minus 20 degree, yeah, then it will start to condensate. This is a value, and this is the value we are usually working with. Yeah? Druck da Punkt, yeah? pressure, uh, pressure condensation temperature. Condensation temperature at standard pressure is here. Yeah? And under pressure, yeah? those things are higher usually. Yeah? If under standard pressure I have 1 or 3 millibar, yeah? or let's say at minus 10 degree, if I have a, a, a pressure, <laughs> if I have a pressure of 1030 millibar, I have minus 20, 10 degree, then 2 dot and have 2.8 millibar water steam pressure inside. Yeah? This is my, my Taupunkt, yeah? my, my temperature where we start to condensate if this level is reached. Yeah? If I have, if I then compress it yeah? and now I double it, I don't have 2.8 millibar inside, I have 5.6 millibars, of course. Yeah? 5.6 millibars, because I doubled the pressure, yeah? then 5.6 would be somewhere, let's say, minus 2 degrees Celsius. So the, the temperature where we start to condensate has been raised from minus 10 to minus 2 degrees Celsius. Yeah? The more I'm compressing the air, the higher this tau punkt will get. Yeah? So, I have to dry the air. That's the bottom line. I have to dry it. Yeah? How do I dry it? Well, I can use this. I can use this simply. Yeah? I can simply say, oh, I will cool it. Yeah? Cool dryers. How is this working? You usually have some heat, heat exchanger somewhere. Maybe there are two-step processes like this. Then we do have somewhere is the air 
the moistured air, yeah, compressed moistured air, rushing in. Yeah. This is one vessel. Yeah. And here we have a second vessel. Here we have cooling machine, yeah, like in the fridge. Here we will go in with cool lines. And those cool lines, here we will simply condensate the air. It's like and the cold beverage. Here the hot steamy compressed air is coming inside and here are cool lines and those cool lines there will then be drops and these drops will go down and underneath here I have somewhere a valve and I can open and close it and get rid of the condensate. Okay. And here then I go out again. Yeah. Here is partially dry air yeah. and this partially dry air which has been already cooled, will already cool this here as well. And here I also have might I might have some condensate already inside. Yeah. Here steamy air yeah, with a lot with a lot of moisture has been reached. Here it will cool down, will be cooled down from this air, which is coming from this. Yeah? And so the moisture will be already less. Yeah? Then we are reaching here yeah? and the moisture will be less and less and less. And here on the output, which is here then, we have dry air. Okay? So the, the air itself, it will go in here, pass through those lines, will then go in here, will pass here yeah, and go out here. Yeah. Here is the, the moisture there, here is the dry air. Yeah. And this here is some, some heat pump or something like this. Yeah. Which will keep those lines cold simply. Yeah? Cool drying. This is one possibility. Yeah? This cool drying, uh, this is rather cheap. Yeah? It is re reliable and cheap. Yeah? Uh, however, you can reach Pressure, uh, pressure points at around 2 to 5 degrees Celsius. Yeah. This would be the pressure, the Druckdaupunkt, yeah. the pressure point of condensation temperature, condensation temperature, 2 to 3, 5 degrees. So it's not that low. Okay. Then there's also a, a possibility uh, which is called adsorption. Absorption dryer. How is this working? Yeah. Here we have some sort of valve. Yeah. We are getting in here the moisture there. Yeah. Looking like this down here. And the moisture there will reach as some sort of container, some sort of tank, yeah, where something like a sponge, uh, spongy material, very a material which is simply a lot of holes, a lot of things are inside. Yeah? And here there's a physical reaction. Yeah? There's a physical reaction. The sponge will simply suck out the water. Okay, it will suck out the water of the air. Yeah? Then we are again going through some sort of valve. Yeah? And here we have then dry air. Okay. So a sponge-like material 
in a physical, this is a physical reaction. In a physical reaction, this air, this moisture air here, yeah, will get dry simply. Yeah. And here we have dry air. But at one point in time, one point in time, this material here, it simply sucked, soaked with, with, with uh, liquid. Uh, then it's not drying anymore. Uh, so this is why usually there is also a second one. Exactly the same. Uh, exactly the same. Uh, if one is now operating, trying to cool or drying the, the moisture there, the other one is heated up. There's a barrier in between. There's also a barrier. Here we are also going to this one. Mm -hmm. This is how this looks like. A little bit. And here we are blowing in hot air. So there is some sort of winded fan. Yeah? Hot air blower. The hot air will be blown through this hot air. Yeah. And the hot air is cool, is 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 dry. This sponge-like material. Yeah? So on one side, I will dry this material, and I will clean or or get rid of moisture on the other side. If this is not working good enough, then I will simply switch. Then I will use the other side as drying agent. And I will use the hot air to dry this one. Okay? So this means huh? it's reversible. Huh? I can, it's like drying a sponge. Huh? If, the, if the sponge is soaking wet, I will dry it with the hot air. Huh? So what does it mean? Here we can reach points of around minus 90 degrees Celsius. Yeah? So we can reach Druckdauerpunkte, yeah? we can reach temperatures uh, of minus 90 degrees Celsius without condensating air. So this is very low. Okay? Very low. This is the big advantage. Yeah? The disadvantage is it's simply more effort than this. Yeah? It also takes a lot of more energy. Not that efficient as this. Adsorption dryer, cool dryer. Both things are used. This thing is used if you really need to have dry air. Yeah? These things here are often used, simply often used, because minus 2 to 5 degrees Celsius, if you're not in, in external, usually it's fine. Yeah? There's also another possibility. Yeah? Absorption drying. Simply turn this over. Adsorption dry. Here we have a melting agent. Okay, so there is some sort of granulate. Lying. Located at and this melting agent, yeah, if it gets in contact with the moisture air, here is the air, here is the dry air, yeah, then this melting agent will. Uh, get out the water in a chemical 
way. Yeah? So this is a chemical variant. Chemical reaction. Water is bound chemically to this, to this drying agent. Huh? This drying agent is melting. The melting dry, the melted drying agent is summarized here. Huh? Is dripping. And I have get to rid. I have get to rid. I have, I have to get rid of it. <laughs> So this is a chemical reaction. This is also, you can buy this. You can buy this in the, in, I don't know, almost everywhere, a lot of stores. Yeah, It's the, 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 the advertising is to get the air, dry air in your rooms. Yeah, if you have issues with your uh, moisture, yeah, maybe there's somewhere the mushrooms growing. <laughs> yeah, if you have trouble with the moisture inside of your house, then you can buy such such drying agents. Yeah, you stand it, and this is really working. Yeah, so there's this melting agent, yeah, which will disappear over time, and this is what makes this expensive. Okay, this is exactly what makes this expensive. That I mean, it's a simple approach. That's the upside. There, I don't need a lot of energy. Yeah. Simple approach, no energy needed. Here, energy, energy, a lot of energy. Here, no energy needed. Huh? However, I need this melting agent. I have always to fill up this melt melting agent. This makes it rather expensive in operation. Okay. Yeah. This is why we need to cool air or dry air. I always say cool because it's the usual approach. Huh? The usual approach is this cooling, cooling dry, dry by cooling. Reason, partial pressure is increased and then it's going to condensate somewhere. So I have to dry it. Next time we're going to talk about filtering the air. Yeah? Now we have dry air. Like, but maybe there is dust inside. Next time we're going to talk about how to get rid of those things which are inside, filtering it, how our air filter is working. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>